Well, my friends, we've got another instance where Republicans may be made a little bit of an oopsie. And it's just so crazy to me how this just keeps happening again and again. If you'll recall, a couple of weeks ago, the Hamilton County chapter of Moms for Liberty, I guess, accidentally happened to feature a Hitler quote on the front page of their newspaper. And now just, uh, you know, Weeks later, we have multiple Arizona Republican Party officials having to come out and publicly distance themselves from an event where neo-Nazi Nick Fuentes was the keynote speaker. So here's the flyer for the event in question scheduled to take place on July 30th. And as you can see, it's an event organized by the Arizona College Republicans United Group, and it prominently features Nick Fuentes as the guest speaker, along with Jake Chansley, also known as the QAnon shaman. But on top of that, there's also Ryan Sanchez, a.k.a. Culture War Criminal, who was formerly a member of a neo-Nazi fight club, which is a thing called Rise Above Movement. But I mean, the inclusions, aside from the extremists and the Nazis that should really stand out to you the most, are the official Republican Party organizations that are supposedly affiliated. That includes the Pima County GOP, as well as the Maricopa and Yavapai County GOPs, who are supposedly in support of this event. Yeah. So you have official Republican Party organization supposedly affiliated with this event where a neo-Nazi Holocaust denier is the keynote speaker. That is not a good look. And that's quite the understatement, right? But once the flyer was released and started to circulate on social media, Republican officials from all three of the organizations supposedly affiliated quickly condemned it. For example, the Maricopa County Republican Committee tweeted, the MCRC never authorized, sponsored, or promoted the upcoming July 30th College Republicans United Convention, any placement of MCRC or Maricopa GOP, etc. on anything associated with the CRU event is unauthorized. Now, additionally, Pima County Republican Chairman Dave Smith put out a similar statement saying that they also never authorized the event or agreed to speak at or support this event, and the Yavapai County Republicans basically echoed the same exact sentiment. Now, the question is, how did this happen? Did the Arizona College Republicans United group just lie, or did people within these organizations give them the green light? Well, the accusations are certainly flying, and the paranoia has been ramped up because they're all kind of pointing the fingers at each other, and this has kind of devolved into a hilariously entertaining kerfuffle online. For example, Representative Alexander Colodin responded to the flyer claiming, the GOP committees I have spoken to were surprised to hear it. Whoever is doing this should be treated as a saboteur. And in response to Colodin, Luke Mossyman, who is the chair of the Maricopa County Young Republicans Club, says that an insider told him that it was Brian Ference, who is the Maricopa County member at large, who's the person that okayed the inclusion at least for the Maricopa County GOP on the flyer. However, Ferris chimed in denying that, saying, I'm not authorized to make decisions for the entire MCRC. Just curious who this supposed insider is, or is it like anonymous quote-unquote experts? Now, I find this absolutely hilarious because you have a bunch of hyperpartisan conspiratorial Republicans all scrambling to place blame on someone other than themselves, and they're all pointing the fingers at each other, and they're getting increasingly conspiratorial, talking about saboteurs and insiders. And even though we're dealing with deeply unserious imbeciles, I do have to give them credit for at least being very entertaining. But we're just getting started because College Republicans United decided to bust out the receipts. And in response to the Pima County Republicans saying that they never agreed to speak, College Republicans responded to that tweet saying, GOP has an integrity problem, along with a screenshot of an email between them and the Pima County Republican Party's vice chairman, where she says, yes, absolutely. Absolutely, when they asked her to verify that her or someone else was able to speak at the event, and this verification email was a follow-up to them getting the go-ahead in person. So let's pause for a moment, because based on that receipt, it seems as if the Pima County GOP was caught, dead to rights. They're lying, right? They confirmed that they would be speaking at the event. This is their second vice chair. However, even though that is true and that email is real, well... They responded, and the response is actually fairly reasonable, at least by Republican standards, right? They're claiming that they were misled by the CRU, and when you hear their side of the story, it's not unreasonable to deduce that 
mm, yeah, it seems like CRU didn't really give them the full picture when they talked about this event. Here's the details. The Arizona Mirror reports, quote, this was a setup, Pima County GOP chairman Dave Smith told the Mirror. Smith said that ASU CRU's founder, Rick Thomas, approached Anastasia Tatakis, the party's second vice chairman, at an event and asked if the county party would speak at a college Republicans event. They agreed and ASU CRU later followed up with an email sending a flyer that did not list Fuentes or Pima GOP as a sponsor. Quote, we just thought she was going to be a speaker at a Republican conference, Smith said. We were misrepresented to and lied to. Smith said that the ordeal has caught him off guard and created new ways that the county committees will be communicating in the future. That sentiment was echoed by Tatakis, who was listed as a speaker at the event representing the Pima County GOP. This particular activity and behavior where you are sabotaged and set up is completely indescribable to me, Tatakis said. We do not participate in any anti-Semitic anything. This is horrible, and had we known, we would have never committed. So when you hear their side of the story, I don't necessarily think that it is wrong for them to feel like they were being misled. Although, before we got their side of the story, I told you that their response was reasonable by Republican standards, and that's because I don't think that they're without fault completely. You know, it's clear that they didn't do their due diligence. Now, they did respond to the CRU and their receipts with their own receipt, and they shared the flyer that was given to them in a Twitter reply saying, actually, you have an integrity problem. This is the attachment that you sent to our second vice chair. She agreed to speak at a GOP event. You sent her a different flyer, not the one you're now promoting. No one agreed to appear with your anti-Semitic white supremacist extremist. Now, if you look at the flyer here closely, there's one very big red flag to me that leads me to conclude that they just didn't do their due diligence here. So even though the quality is terrible, you can still make out the text that says more pending, quote, other speakers redacted due to security. And me personally, if I saw that on a flyer that they sent me as part of an event that I was going to be a part of, I'd be at least a little bit curious. Right? I'd want to inquire more about that, at least for my own personal safety reasons, because if this person is a security threat or there's threats to them, well, I think that it's important to know how that's going to affect myself or the other speakers potentially. So the fact that they weren't curious enough to ask... That is a failure on their part. And it's also a failure on their part because they're working with this group for this event that in the past has had ties to Nick Fuentes' white nationalist movement. And these ties have been known and open for years. But I mean, maybe those Republicans within these organizations just didn't know that. But I mean, you probably should have known that, right? If you are part of the official GOP in your county, then I think that it is incumbent on you to know who you're coordinating with, who you are organizing with. Either way, it does seem like the college Republicans were being overly coy because they knew that the presence of an out and proud neo-Nazi might be a little bit too controversial, to put it mildly, but they got into more of a back and forth on Twitter, and this exchange, as you can see, is deeply unhinged. So CRU responded to that tweet from Pima Republicans saying, the flyer changed multiple times since mid-June. Speakers have been added and taken off the list several times because because of hard feelings about one or more speakers before Fuentes was even thought of. Guilt by association has been a leftist mindset that GOP has now adopted. Yes, because not wanting to be associated with Nazis is a very lefty mindset. Pima responded saying, values and principles matter. If you can't denounce an anti-Semitic racist, you might belong in the Democratic Party, which is just, again, fucking wild. Now CRU responded to that saying, but doing things with the log cabin Republicans and other homosexuals that's okay for pima gop your big tent is degenerate that exchange to me is hysterical because on one hand you have the cru saying oh you're doing this guilt by association game that the leftists are doing but then they're like this shoe with the log cabin republicans <laughs> which is guilt by association it's just it's hilarious like all of these people are so unserious that i, I can't look at this and not find it just incredibly entertaining. Like, to see them bicker back and forth, I say let them fight. Now, whether or not these Republicans, the official Republicans, not the Nazis, although 
you know, maybe that's a distinction without a difference, depending on who you're talking about. But the official party organizations, you know, whether or not they were misled or this was simply a miscommunication, that's up to interpretation. But the problem is these Republicans didn't denounce Nick Fuentes because they felt compelled to take a principled stand against neo-Nazis and anti-Semitism, as they said. Let's be clear, they did it because that's what was politically expedient. Because in an op-ed for AZ Central, E.G. Montini explains, while Arizona Republicans proclaim how grievously offended they are to have been linked in any fashion to Nick Fuentes, a number of their most high-profile members are linked to him proudly. Republican State Senator Wendy Rogers, for example, was a proud speaker at Fuentes' America First Political Action Conference in Florida last year, where she called the white nationalists in attendance patriots and promoted hanging enemies. Then there's Republican U.S. Representative Paul Gosar, who has also attended a Fuentes event and defended Fuentes on the right wing social networking site Gab, saying the phony January 6th committee's partisan witch hunt continues as they have now set their sights on young conservative Christians like Nick Fuentes. This is pure political persecution and it has to stop. You might remember as well that Gosar and fellow Republican Representative Andy Biggs were among 26 members of the House Oversight and Accountability Committee who refused to sign a pledge denouncing white nationalism and white supremacy, as well as the kooky but widespread great replacement theory that says non-white individuals are being brought into the United States to replace white voters. And there's the state Republican Party's most high-profile member, losing governor candidate Carrie Lake. She not only endorsed Gosar, but said of him, Congressman Gosar is the GOAT. We need strong America First patriots like Gosar at every level of government. Yeah, and therein lies the problem, right? Publicly distancing yourself from a high-profile neo-Nazi, that's one thing. But tolerating the anti-Semitism that is rampant within your sphere of politics, in your Republican Party institutions, that just makes you complicit if you don't also combat that. And let's be clear, if Nick Fuentes weren't such a high-profile neo-Nazi, odds are these Republican organizations would have no problem with him speaking alongside them. Because it's not the views that he espouses that make them uncomfortable. It's the political fallout that they're really scared of, right? It's the backlash to being associated with him that frightens them, not his views. And if they really were ignorant about him and this organization's affiliation with Fuentes' griper movement, then don't you think that this whole kerfuffle would be a wake-up call? And I say this because, as Stop Anti-Semitism reports, this entire event ended up getting shut down by the venue itself due to Nick Fuentes' inclusion. And if you look at the replies, which you never should, I mean, you can see that it is just deeply, deeply anti-Semitic, and all of these anti-Semites are being floated to the top since they pay for Twitter Blue. Shouldn't all of this, shouldn't the constant oopsies that they keep having make them a little bit uncomfortable, lead to them realizing, hmm, it's weird how so many neo-Nazis are prominent within the same political circles that I run in. I mean, think about it from your perspective. If you're a DSA member, right, and your local chapter frequently hosted events with neo-Nazi speakers, and it kept happening again and again and again. I mean, wouldn't that at least give the ordinary person pause and get them to reevaluate their association with that particular organization. I mean, if I was part of an organization and they kept getting linked to neo Nazis, either wittingly or unwittingly, that would horrify me. It'd get me to not just reevaluate the people who I associate with, it'd get me to rethink my values. Because if all these people who share my values and political goals keep getting radicalized into Nazism, then maybe that tells me I'm on the wrong path. And the fact that these Republicans aren't being introspective presumably tells me that they're either dumb or complicit. Because regardless, if your political movement is wittingly or unwittingly enabling Nazis, at the end of the day, you're still enabling Nazis, so it's a distinction without a difference.